Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Jumper T20 or actually T20S Express LRS radio controller. Initially I've got this version which you might find still listed on some websites and a few days after receiving it Jumper told me that I should postpone the review because they've decided to make a few changes. Finally only two changes were made. They upgraded the new radio controller with new gimbals and foldable antenna and in case you've bought the older version which as far as I know is now discontinued you can contact Jumper's support team on their AliExpress shop and they should provide you with a discounted price for the new gimbals and foldable antenna. When purchasing the Jumper T20 you can choose between a few options. The T20 version comes with whole sensor gimbals the T20S version, which is the one I've got, comes with RDC 90 gimbals and both versions are available with either 2.4 GHz or 900 MHz internal Express LRS radio transmission module. Now as far as I can tell, judging only by the available pictures online, the T20S RDC 90 version features upgraded stick hands and the gimbals look better than the whole sensor gimbals of the T20 version. However, some would argue that RDC 90 gimbals are overhyped and you shouldn't pay the extra cost. In terms of features and specs, the Jumper T20 is a 20 channels radio controller. On its top side, you can find two sliders, two toggle switches, two two position switches. On its front side, two three position switches, two sliders, and two potentiometers in addition to the six position switch. As you might be able to tell, there are no 16 extra switches and in order to reach the full potential of 20 channels, you will need to add your own do-it-yourself switches. In my opinion, it's not a must because as you can see, it comes with plenty of switches, which is going to be more than enough for most users. In addition, the radio controller features a foldable rotatable antenna it also features a 128 by 64 pixels OLED screen, trim buttons for the four channels. You actually have two extra trim buttons which are currently not in use and they are reserved for future usage. A 3.5 mm trainer port, a USB Type-C port which is used for updating the firmware of the radio controller and the internal Express LRS radio transmission model. It is also used for charging the battery. Unfortunately, it doesn't support quick charge protocols. And it is also used for accessing the internal storage of the radio controller. Don't try to look for a micro SD card as the flash storage chip is built into the main board. Navigating between the different options is done using these three buttons and clickable auto wheel. Short pressing this button is going to take you to the module setup menu. Long pressing it is going to take you to the system settings menu. This button acts as a page forward button by short pressing it and you can go backward by long pressing this button. This is the return button and this is the auto wheel button which will allow you to move between all the options and select an option by short pressing it. Finally, on the back side of the radio controller, in addition to the battery compartment, you can find the heatsink, which helps to cool down the internal Express LRS radio transmission model, as the T20 doesn't feature a built-in fan. It will also allow you, using mounting holes, to attach the new jp 4 in one micro multi-protocol model and an optional nano model bay. Next to the heatsink, under this rubber cover, you can find a 6 pins JST connector which is used for connecting the radio controller to the external model and this XT30 battery connector which in case you need to is used for powering an external model. The XT30 connector is not connected directly to the battery which is used for powering the radio controller so its output voltage is 7.4 volts and its maximum output current is 1.5 amperes. In terms of dimensions, without batteries, the T20 weighs 430.6 grams, including the battery tray and two 21700 lithium-ion battery cells, it weighs 577.7 grams. 
Speaking about batteries, I'm not sure if the T20 features reverse polarity protection, so just to be on the safe side, make sure that the batteries are inserted properly, and I recommend, in order to be extra careful, connect the 2S battery plug to a battery checker in order to make sure that the voltage reading is correct. In comparison to the Radio Master Boxer, which is probably the biggest competitor of the Jumper T20, the Boxer is a bit heavier as it weighs 528.8 grams without a battery. Here you can see the two radio controllers side by side, so the T20 features a bit more compact form factor. In comparison to other radio controllers, here you can see the T20 side by side next to the new Radio Master Pocket, the TBS Mambo, the Jumper T Lite, the T Pro, the Radio Master TX12, and the TX16S, which has been collecting dust because my daily driver for the last year or so has been the Radio Master Zorro. As I've mentioned earlier, one of the major improvements that the new T20 has over the version that was initially released was the upgraded gimbals. As depicted on the screen, using the front hex screws, you will be able to adjust the vertical and horizontal range of movement in addition to the stick height. However, we will be required to disassemble the radio controller in order to switch between mode 2, which is the default option, to mode 1, and in order to adjust the tension of the springs and the throttle. Now, by the way, in case the gimbals look familiar to you, it's because they are a modified version of these high-end gimbals by JR Propo, a company which unfortunately went bankrupt a few years ago. In order to disassemble the radio controller, remove the side rubber grips, unplug the battery, and unscrew all the Phillips screws from the backside. After that, you'll be able to lift the back part, but pay attention that it is connected to the main board as it hosts a couple of switches and the Express LRS radio transmission module. In case you need to fully separate both parts, make sure that all the cables are disconnected, and when putting back the radio controller together, make sure that the antenna connector is properly connected to the radio module. In terms of power consumption, when the Express LRS radio module is set to 25, 50 or 100 milliwatts, I've measured 2.4 watts, on 250 milliwatts, I've measured 3 watts, on 500 milliwatts, 4 watts, and when it was set to the maximum output power of 1 watt, I've measured 6 watts. In case you're going to use this lithium ion battery pack, on 250 milliwatts, you can expect about 10 hours of working time, and on 1 watt, the expected working time is going to be closer to 6 hours. Now you should note that you need to make sure to calibrate the battery voltage using the settings menu of the radio controller, as in my experience, out of the box, the voltage reading was incorrect. As for the new JP4-in-1 module, in order to attach it to the radio controller, remove the back rubber cover, connect the CNC plate to the heatsink using the provided screws, connect the JST connector of the JP4-in-1 module to the radio controller, recommend to do it carefully using tweezers, and after that, connect the JP4-in-1 module to the CNC plate using the provided screws. In order to set up the external multi-protocol radio transmission module, head over to the model settings menu, turn off the internal radio transmission module, enable the external one and set it to multi-protocol, and then you'll be able to select and configure your desired radio protocol, including FlySky, FRSky, and many others. Keep in mind that all FRSky protocols and some other ones will require you to perform a frequency tune in order to get the most out of the model in terms of range. It's a pretty simple step, and in case you're not familiar with this procedure, I recommend to check the multimodal docs. According to Jumper, the maximum output power of the new model is 150 milliwatts. It's pretty light, and it's not going to add a lot of weight to your radio controller. And personally, I fly pretty much all Express LRS, but in case you are in the need for a multi-protocol model, it's going to be a nice and convenient addition to the T20. 
Overall, after testing the T20S for the last couple of days, I can tell you that this radio controller feels very good and solid in the hands. The gimbals also feel very good. I'm not sure if the RDC90 gimbals are better than whole sensor gimbals or if they are better than Radio Masters CNC much more expensive gimbals, but they did provide me with a pretty good feel. I hope that more advanced racers will be able to test this radio controller and provide you with a better feedback regarding the gimbals and tell you whether they are more responsive or not. Personally, I didn't experience any problems with the gimbals and I think that they will be good for both pinchers and tumbers as the stick hands will provide you with a very good grip. Now in case you're debating which radio controller you should get, the Radio Master Boxer or the Jumper T20, I think that in case you're flying RC airplanes and you need plenty of switches and sticks and you're looking for something like the Radio Master Boxer with a slimmer foam factor, the Jumper T20 seems like an excellent choice. However, I think that the overall quality of the Radio Master Boxer is better than the Jumper T20. It also features a bigger screen, which in my opinion is not a big deal as the small screen of the T20 is functional and readable. And in case you are using an X-Wrap, you're not going to feel the weight difference between the two. So again, the Radio Master Boxer is also going to be a very good choice. In addition, I think that the general quality of the Radio Master Boxer is better. Jumper need to improve their quality assurance. For example, these sliders do not feel very smooth in opposed to the original version, which do feel okay. And on top of that, something that doesn't really bother me, but it will bother you in case you're using these sliders, only the top ones will enable you to feel their center points, whereas these potentiometers doesn't have any center point. So again, it's not something that bothers me, but in case you're using sliders, that's probably something that you expect from these switches. Finally, the Boxer features a bigger battery compartment and on the T20, the battery compartment is big, but the 2700 battery cells are a bit tight inside so you have to walk your way around for closing the battery compartment and in case you're using JR external radio modules it's going to be easier to use the JR module bay of the Radio Master Boxer whereas it's going to be a bit more tricky on the T20 and it will require you to add this adapter which will limit you to nano-sized modules. Anyway, that's going to do it for my review of the Jumper T20. I'm going to use it a bit more, and in case I will encounter any problems or issues, I will provide you with more feedback. And by the way, the reason that I didn't measure the output power of the Express LRS model and also the JP4 in one model is because I damaged my immersion of CRF meter after testing the Foxeer. 5 watts VTX, I might get a new RF meter. So in case you are interested in more tests that include output power measurements, please let me know down below and I'm going to go ahead and buy a new RF meter. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. I wish you all happy flying and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.